Rapid Current Rise Pulse MIG can reduce fumes over 80%. Airco developed Pulse MIG in the late 60s, early 70s. However, pulse control was very crude and controls were not very precise. Parameters were very difficult to set and maintain. It took the introduction of microprocessor control and very fast switching transistors such as attainable with MOSFETs to make the control of welding parameters with Pulse MIG simple. Bob Irving, a feature editor of the Welding Journal, wrote an article in the February 1992 issue discussing inverter power reducing fumes in Pulse MIG welding. The article discusses work done by John Deere and future work planned by the Edison Welding Institute. We'll review both. David Trees in the Deer Research Center is quoted as saying their work showed an average fume reduction of 67% with a proper fast rise pulse MIG. He stated fume reduction ranged from 50 to 90%. We worked with David to produce a unique fast rise pulse power system which gave excellent results. Tree stated Dr. Tom Eager, professor at MIT, defined the reason for fume generation and why the pulse MIG system worked. Dr. Eager is quoted in the article stating, the deer findings are based on sound physical principles. This is a very significant development. A visit to the Deer Research Center revealed very high speed pictures of pulse MIG in operation. During a visit to ESOB's equipment factory, David Treats described what was occurring to the equipment development engineers. He showed that an arc was attached to the molten drop and indicated the surface of that drop could be as hot as 10,000 degrees F. Since steel boils at about 5,400 degrees F, that is what causes the fumes. The energy required to get electrons to flow into the wire tip is a product of the anode potential times current. The longer the drop suspends from the wire, the hotter it becomes. Fast rise pulses at a high frequency cause the arc to move from the very hot drop to the colder wire tip. The high current pulse also causes the drop to detach. When the arc is on the colder wire surface, fume generation is lower. Some more recent technical papers indicate the current passing through the necking area between the drop and the wire increases resistance heating, temperature, and fumes causing the drop to detach quickly by employing a fast current rise minimizes necking time and lowers fume generation. If the pulse rate is too low, the drops increase in size and are subjected to the high temperatures longer. However, at high pulse frequency, it takes a special fast switching power source to have the pulse rise time reach the desired rate. In addition to the normal volts and amps, with pulse MIG a number of variables must be defined. Base current, peak current, pulse frequency. The current rise time from base to peak current was found by John Deere to be the key control parameter for significantly reducing fumes. Note with the standard digipulse power system tested by John Deere, there was only a short time spent at high current. Fume reduction results were significantly greater when we increase the current rise rate. In February 1995, Harvey Kastner from the Edison Welding Institute published a paper in the AWS Journal on fume generation with pulse MIG. This was the work referenced by Irving. He reports on tests with four different pulse MIG power. The lowest fume generation with standard spray arc MIG was about 0.25 grams per minute. The Digipulse power system was tested and showed a very significant reduction in fumes at a very specific voltage. Looking at the published waveforms, it may not have been the modified fast rise pulse Digipulse. However, one data point with the Digipulse power showed a very low fume level of 0.05 milligrams per minute, or an 80% reduction from the lowest fixed current MIG. Paper notes fume generation rate is particularly dependent on voltage. If evaluating pulse MIG to reduce fumes, the proper power system must be selected, in addition to setting all the variables and selecting the proper shielding gas mixture. 
All pulse power will not automatically achieve the desired result. Some use too low a switching frequency or control designs to achieve the low fume objective. This waveform from a modern ESAB Aristo is one that can achieve even faster rise times than the digipulse. The only way to define the amount of achievable fume reduction is to evaluate parameters and measure. The Aristo can store up to 256 sets of welding parameters, so once established they can be memorized and retrieved. A very important feature is the control of voltage. Long lines and torch cables create errors in readings. The Aristo has special circuits to compensate. The latest Aristo power system is available in 320 and 500 amp models. Starting pulse MIG systems can be more difficult than conventional MIG. The first 125 DigiPulse systems installed at Deere experienced some starting issues. A device was installed to reduce the peak shielding gas flow surge rate in the starting significantly improved. Our gas saver system controls the maximum allowable starting peak gas surge to improve starts and in so doing also reduces shielding gas waste. The patented system employs a small ID custom extruded hose which combined with a peak surge flow orifice reduces stored gas by 80% when welding stops. When welding starts there's 80% less gas to surge and the rate is limited by the peak flow surge orifice. The peak flow rate at the weld start with normal gas delivery systems has been measured in excess of 200 CFH. This is over four times the maximum level that produces turbulent flow. The gas saver system does not change the pressure, so enough gas is quickly delivered to purge air from the start area. This also automatically compensates for flow restrictions caused by spatter buildup in the nozzle, twists in the gun cable, or debris in the wire conduit that often doubles as a gun gas passage. The patented gas saver system has no moving parts to adjust or wear. It is simple to install and is inexpensive. Payback is measured in weeks. For more information about our gas saver system, visit netwelding.com. With thousands of systems in use, our fabricator customers have saved millions of dollars in wasted shielding gas and do so year after year while improving weld start quality. Thank you.